hate kids and adults. Old people, young people, whatever. I can say old. Look at my head. I'm bald. I'm old. All right, kids. Here's what we're going to do. This is another one of my TI Inspire graphing calculator tutorials. Today, I'm going to teach you a little bit about graphing radicals. Pretty simple. Probably about a five-minute video. All of my videos can be found at www.nkinfinity.com. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. It helps me out. I'm helping you out. You can help me out a little bit by subscribing. The more subscribers we get, the better I look at Google by Google. So that would help me out. Hopefully, you'll get a little bit of information about graphing calc. Uh, um, using the graphing calculator. But if you want a little extra help, you can always go to my our website. Here's NK Infinity. This is my partner in crime, Miss Newman. She's another amazing math teacher. I say another, like I am amazing, but she's an amazing math teacher. She's helped me out a lot. She has to, used to be a student of mine. Kind of looks like my daughter, huh? <laughs> that would be bad. Anyway, go to, um, not like bad, bad in a bad way, just I'm not that old. I'm, yeah, I'm not that old. Uh, TI Inspire, if you go to home, It'll be underneath students probably as well. I think I'm going to put it under both New York State teachers and students. But if you go to TI Inspire videos, here's where I show that you can buy it from Amazon. It's probably the cheapest you can get it. Or you can get it from Texas Instruments. Um, they sell it for about $27.50 a year. You get like the, uh, what you'll get is, I'm sorry, I should already have it up, an emulator that looks like, where is it? There it is, like this. And it'll come on your computer. So you have to actually have, uh, a laptop or some kind of a computer. It doesn't work on a Chromebook, I don't believe. And then here, these are the four videos I've already made. I've actually made five. Uh, if I think they require some explanation, like when I do normal CDF for binomial distributions and things like that, uh, that's not for binomial distributions, but I, when I do uh, some other things that may require you uh, an explanation, I'll put that in there as well. So anyway, there's that. Hopefully by the time you're getting there, there's a lot more than four. But let's get going. Let's get rock and rolling. This is what, if you bought the, la, the, the TI Inspired software, it would look like this. Uh, let me view this at a little bit zoom higher rate. So there's that. Um, it would look less like this. And you can use it just like a regular, like you use in classroom, but you have to do it on a laptop. So what are we going to do? We're gonna just going to graph any We're going to graph some radical equations. So we're going to graph this thing very simply. So the easiest way to go into graph, if you're in home on this big home messy screen, just click on B for graph. See B? You just click on B. See where I'm at right here? B. Click on B. This puts you in the scratch pad. Anything done in the scratch pad, you can throw away pretty easily. Um, at some other point, I'll have some tutorials on how to use documents, how to save documents, how to send documents. That all is going to be underneath the teacher stuff because you as kids probably don't care about that. I want to graph this function, so I'll just do three. The square root function can be found in two different places. You can either find it right here above the times button. Just click on that, and it's right there. Boom. Hit enter and be done. Although, sometimes it doesn't like that. I got to use these arrows. I can't go over there and click at it because there, you can either use that or you can go right here and see it in blue right here. Highlight in blue, control, blue. Ah, escape. Escape. Control, blue. Oh, now I got to get my three. Somehow I got rid of my three. So I'll put my three back. Now, anything you do in the radical, any, anytime you start typing now, it'll be in underneath the radical. You hit X plus two. But now that five has to come outside the radical. So you have to hit the right arrow and then do minus five. So you, anytime you're doing something like that, you have to get out of that and then put them. Then you can put the minus five. There it is. Um, there's my graph. So then the question over here said state the domain and range. Well, you can, you can look at it and say, okay, it looks as if it starts at negative 2 and goes forever and ever and ever to the right. But you can always take a look at the table, do Control-T. Control-T is a toggle, right? You just hit Control-T, it'll go away. And if I hit the up arrow here, and I just go up. See, at negative 2, I'm okay, but at negative 3, I get an error. I get an error. Um, and it should make sense that when x is negative 2, you'll, uh, below negative 2, you have a negative under the radical. So as far as domain goes, um, I don't know how your teachers, you could just say domain uh, from bracket negative 2 to infinity. It's probably easiest. And range, uh, so this is the lowest point, and that's at negative 2. And you'll notice if I come over here and go to the y values, they just keep getting bigger 
and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger. So the lowest value was, was it negative 5? When you plugged in a negative 2, that gave you a minimum value of negative 5. So my lowest value will be from negative 5 to positive infinity. All right, that one wasn't too bad. By the way, you could be asked about transformations. Uh, because of the uh, plus 2, it moved to the left 2. And because of the minus 5, it went down 5. And because of the 3, that's a dilation. Uh, get rid of the, the, get rid of the uh, thing. We just hit Control-T. I think by that. And let's say I just want to clean my scratch out. Doc B is the easiest way. Doc B is just psh, get rid of the scratch pad. Then I just come over here. This is the scratch pad button. I just click on that. I'm going back into scratch pad. And now I got another one to graph. So I'll bring that up for you. It's going to be 2. Now, notice I've got a minus x here. Maybe you need, maybe you know what that means. Maybe you don't know what that means. But let's see what we got. So we're going to do 2, control, frac, that, ne that, negative x, minus 3. And then outside the radical, plus 2. Now, notice it's going in the opposite direction. It's, it, now, it moved to the left even though I had a minus there, but because that's because of this negative here. Normally what would happen is, if I can graph over here, normally what would happen here is it would move to the right 3 and up 2. So 1, 2, 3, and up 2. Boom. And it would look like that. But because of this negative right here, that's a reflection in the y-axis. So it got reflected over the y-axis, the y so now it starts at negative 3 and goes in forever and ever in that direction. So now if you're talking about domain, uh, let me do this. I'll do it over here for you so you can see it. Uh, the domain, domain would be, well, its biggest point is actually right here at negative 3, and it's going forever and ever in that direction. So that means i got to start at negative infinity and go up to negative 3 bracket. And range, well, range, the highest value is still the same here. Or the lowest value is still 2, and it goes forever and ever up. So the range is from negative 2 to positive infinity. Is that it? Just two problems? Probably just two problems. That's enough. There you get an idea how to, how to uh, use the graphing calculator. One last thing, man. Maybe I should show you this. Let's go back to this original one. I'm going to type this one back in. I want to show you something. So we dock B this sucker. Go back in the scratch pad. 3 square root of x plus 2, get out, minus 5. What if I put a negative out front? Well, this is what it looks like now, right? That's actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit tab, and I'm going to get rid of this minus 5. So let's just see what it looks like. So there's what it looks like right there, okay? What happens if I take this thing and put a negative out front? Anybody know? It's just going to flip it over the x-axis. So the negative out front is still the same. It's a reflection over the x-axis. A negative on the inside is a reflection over the y-axis. Some of the things that you're going to be responsible for in Algebra 2. All right, kids, that's it. That's enough for radicals. Bye.